Hello everyone. Thank you for accessing this lecture, Introduction to CubeSat System Integration and Electrical Testing. I'm Kiko Mieta from Major University, the lecturer for this session. Here is the summary of my work history. My main research topic is the small spacecraft system design and related technology. I've been working on small satellite projects for more than 10 years and I have experience in many roles in spacecraft design, development and operation. Here are the contents of this lecture. This lecture introduces the detail of system integration and electrical testing. In this phase, it is required to plan for system verification logically. After the review of the related lecture, the system integration flow is explained in detail. This lecture especially focuses on explaining software development and verification. First, an introduction. This figure shows the overview of the satellite development, the flow of the satellite design and fabrication. In this flow, most important thing is clarifying the requirement and purpose of each phase. The satellite design starts with the defining the mission requirement. In this phase, we have to identify stakeholders of the project, summarize their demand, and define the satellite project mission requirement. Then we move on to perform the analysis of the requirement and define the satellite system which realize the mission requirement. The demands and the technical specification are divided into small functions and systems gradually. And finally, it reaches subsystem or component specification design. Here, we also design the interface consistencies between the divided functions or components in detail. The design is validated with the comparison to the requirement. The design and the implementation of each component are verified through the integration process. The function of the component and the systems are verified with a comparison to a related phase design. Starting with the component level, move on to the subsystem level, and it is the system level. The satellite system design is performed by dividing the mission requirement into smaller requirements and functions. And the system verification is performed through the integration of the component to build up the subsystem and system. This lecture focuses on the these fabrication and verification phases. The satellite system has complexity, and these kind of complicated system design and variation are difficult to complete in only one cycle. It needs iteration. Therefore, we use the phase project planning method to develop the system with high quality and high efficiency, even if the system has complexity. The method divides the development phase into some phases, defines the main verification target for each phase, and verifies that system step by step. Each phase consists of division and integration steps, but the validation or verification plan have differences for efficient development. 
Here, the development phase is divided into three phases. The first phase, BBM phase, verifies the functional feasibility of the design system, and the main verification target is the new development element. The second phase, EM phase, tests the feasibility of the whole design as a satellite system. The tests are performed for the qualification of the system design. The system constraints and interface consistencies are also checked in detail. All functions and performances are confirmed as the satellite system. For example, the environmental test is performed under worst case conditions. The final phase, the FM phase, makes the satellite system by following the confirmed design. The test aims to confirm the fabricated system satisfies the requirement and are called acceptance test. This phase verifies there are no implementation errors. For example, environmental test is performed under realistic condition. Here, this lecture focuses on the system integration and electrical testing. Even though it has some differences depends on the development phase, the main integration flow can be assumed as the same. The integration performed together with the verification of the defined function or hardware group step by step. The verification is performed using the verification plan which is defined by using the related design. Here, the main checkpoint has to be clarified the perform effective tests. In addition, clarification of the risk is also important for updating system design and establishing the operations plan. For efficient project operation, documentation of this work is important. The verification has to be performed by following the test manual which enables everyone to perform the same test with the same quality. The test results have to be shared among all related members to understand the development status clearly. These documented experiences and knowledge are also useful for the related community members by sharing as lessons learned. Usually, this kind of integration process tends to focus on hardware integration, but the software design, development, and integration are also very important to mission success. This series has many related lectures to this talk as summarized in this slide. Lecture 3 shows the flow of satellite development and review meetings, which is related phase project planning method. Lecture 4 shows the definition of the subsystems and their relationships. Lecture 10 shows the software development and integration and verification. Lecture 14 shows the functional verification of the attitude control system, which is one of the most complicated subsystems, and it shows a good example of the verification. Lecture 15 shows the system verification and the details 
OPTA test. Then let us move on to the details of this topic. Here is the overview of the system integration. As summarized in this slide, the system integration is performed in a bottom-up manner. Both the hardware or software integration start with the component verification. It starts with single and simple function or performance test. The characteristics of the interface are confirmed by using the standard equipment. The power, signal, and mechanical interface characteristics are checked one by one with standard test equipment. Then move on to the interface compatibility test between the actual components. Single software functions related to the hardware are also checked together with similar test step. The detailed component performance tests tend to be done during this phase especially. Since the performance tests are performed under various critical co environmental conditions. Then we move on to the subsystem verification phase. This phase verifies the subsystem function or performance, which consists of multiple components and functions. Here, data handling has an important role and requires detailed verification to assure the mission success. Data acquisition timing, processing duration, and enable or disable of the hardware or function are deeply related to the performance. Finally, we reach the system verification phase. Here, the full system verification is performed. Important parts are the introduction of the operational mode and transition, which define the combination of the functions and their interfaces. It also verifies the interface verification between the design satellite system and the outside system. We performed end-to-end -end tests which include interface verification between the ground station and the satellite system, both in hardware or software aspect. From the next slide, the details of each step are shown with some examples. From this slide, the detail of the step-by-step -step verification are shown. This slide shows the first step, a single unit test. It corresponds to the component test. This step checks whether the components realize the design specification. The verification plan is established to compare the components with the design specification. For example, mechanical interfaces are confirmed by measuring the important aspects, such as the dimension, mass, or position of the connector or screw. Here, the electrical interfaces are very important for integration because they are mismatch easily cause the accident. This photo shows the setup of the transmitter's power interface test. The transmitter case is connected to the ground line. This experimental jig is called a breakout box, which makes it easy to contact the connector pin by probes. The power interface check starts with a pin assignment pin check 
by measuring the resistance between the pins. After confirmation of the pin assignment, the component is turned on by using standard power supply equipment. Usually, the component current profile become like this figure. The lower plot shows the voltage profile and the upper plot shows the current profile. Like this figure, current profile is not constant one and show a peak just after the power supply timing. Then show a constant value co called the nominal current. The transient peak is called rush current and it tends to be much rather than the nominal current. This value is important to define the operations policy or safety trigger of the power supply. Generally, the component has a certain range for supply voltage and it is very important to confirm the power characteristic strength of the various voltage conditions, the nominal, lowest, and highest voltage characteristics. The signal interface is also important. There are some rated talk during the lecture 10. As well as the pin assign and this specification, the data structure or timings are also important. The characteristics are confirmed by standard equipment. The serial data tend to be received by the standard personal computer via a commercial converter. Here, making test report is important in order to share the result with project members and related people. In this way, we can check if the component realizes the designed interface. After checking the single unit's variety, the interface compatibility test is conducted. It is a part of subsystem verification. This process starts with test planning. Based on the single unit test report and design document, the potential mismatch is shared with the related member. Then the power interfaces are confirmed by using actual power supply equipment. To avoid a connection error, it is better to start the pin assign measurement. Then check the voltage and current characteristics with the onboard equipment. Usually, the onboard power component has a safety function and turns off the component power switch when it measures over current. The interface text checks disk interfaces. The signal interface is confirmed by connecting with actual connection targets. Here, the onboard software is also confirmed to achieve the required function. For example, the command and response over data acquisition timing, logic, and so on. The photo shows the interface test of the main and mission transmitter. Main and mission onboard computers and mission sensor. These test results are also summarized in the report. These interfaces are confirmed one by one and the connecting to the other is only 
permitted after validation. After confirmation of the interfaces, the system test phase is conducted. The left photo shows the table SAT phase. In this phase, components from the satellites are laid on the table and all interfaces and connections are checked. The subsystem or system level functional tests are also performed. This configuration allows checking the main function and performances with high accessibility than mounting the components to the satellite structure. Some interfaces test between the satellite system or subsystems and the outside systems are performed with this configuration. It is better to use the actual harness during the test in the final phase. During this phase, producing a test report is also important to determine potential source of the mismatch or errors. By comparing the result with the design value and format test result, we can distinguish the source of the problems. For structural design or fabrication, a detailed feasibility check is difficult to complete with only a drawing. In this case, making a mock-up model is useful to check the design like this photo. This mock-up enables us to check the harness length, accessibility of the engineer or room for the tool for the integrations. This kind of step avoid redesign after making the actual hardware. After checking the electrical or mechanical interfaces, the components are built up as the satellite system. During the integration, we have to check both the electrical and the mechanical interfaces by comparing the result with the design or format test result and these check results are also writing down. After building up the system as the satellite configuration, the system verification phase is conducted. In this phase, the satellite functions are verified compared to the system requirement. In this phase, satellite is tested to make sure it works correctly in the laboratory before conducting the environmental test. The whole system function tests usually include these elements. Perform power on and power off tests under the actual configuration for all components. Summarize the power consumption by using the format test result and compare the power budget of the system or subsystem with the design value. Check all data interfaces, confirm all data can be acquired or all commands can be handled as following the design. Check that all operation modes can achieve the design specification, including mode transition. Check the flight software can achieve the design function and performance. Test results are compared to the system design and the format test result, and they are also summarized in the report. For system verification, the end-to-end -end test is very important for flight software verification. 
In this phase, all telemetry and command verification are performed using equivalent RF equipment and the software system of the ground station. The test results are compared to the system design and format test results, and they are also summarized in the report. Flight software development tends to be delayed compared to hardware integration. And some commands or telemetry cannot be handled with the ground station software if we keep skip performing a detailed verification. This phase avoids such errors by using the actual software system. This photo shows an overview of some environmental tests. The left photo shows the summer cycle test, and the right one shows the electromagnetic compatibility test. Together with the environmental test, the flight software also can be confirmed by checking the full data flow from the ground station to the satellite. And satellite to ground station. Some environmental conditions affect the system performances, like the computation duration. After finishing the environmental test, it is better to take time to perform long-term operational tests. Fundamental operation sequence and emergency operations verification are especially important. For this purpose, it recommends performing real-time emulation of the initial operation sequence or the operation for overcoming the anomaly as much as possible. Like this, the status integration proceeds. For this verification process, software development and verification are very important. Therefore, the process is explained again focusing on the software development and verification. For the software design and verification, we also think of almost the same architecture as the Satellite system development like this figure. The software development also starts from the mission requirement. Then define the software requirement, move on to the software architecture design, and detail the software design. The software requirement is broken down into a single function such as component driver. Based on the design, we implement the software from the single function element and build up to the right software. Here for the software development, these aspects have to be considered when we design the software architecture. Reusability, reliability, and maintainability. It is very difficult and inefficient to design and implement all software functions every time. Because software verification takes a long duration of the time. It is recommended to divide a hardware-related part because the non-hardware-related part has the potential to be reused if a suitable interface can be designed. These approaches are one of the solutions to improve the reliability. In addition, this software has 
to have maintainability. On both software updates have some difficulties, for example, the verification and validation resources are limited. It is important to have room for onboard modification. For example, it is better to have the ability to override the tuning parameter by command from the ground station. Software development is difficult to visualize, therefore, clarification of the relationship between the design and the test result is much more important than hardware development. And without software, the satellite never works as the design system. This slide summarizes some typical examples of the software development component layer. This is a typical data packet structure. It is important to define the standard data packet structure for the project. The structure is applied to the communication between the ground station and the main computer. It is also tend to be applied to the internal computers with the project developed software. The format is deeply related to the ground station's constraints or communication method. For example, a mature communication has a certain format. And even if you do not use the amateur band, the CCSDS format is recommended because many grant stations have the software or equipment to handle them. When you plan to ask for cooperation with the grant station overseas, this part explains the component driver. Most onboard components have data interface. The components of the computer tend to have their own data packet structure and it usually differs from the structure between the onboard computer and ground station. Therefore, we have to handle the device dependent data packet structure. This part shows the software design and implementation of the device-dependent command packet handler. The component driver part sends the defined command to the target component. The software's function is usually confirmed during the component interface compatibility test. Sometimes, these interfaces are constructed with analog signals. Generally, all defined commands are designed to be implemented. After validation of the device-dependent command, we also have to check the handling ability of the device control command from the ground session. In this part, the software transfers the ground session command to the device by analyzing the ground session command and sending the corresponding device dependent command. For the telemetry interface, the component driver obtains the device data from the component analyze and check the useful data region from the data and send them to the memory. It is better to define all status data for the driver. 
this interface is validated during the component interface compatibility test. Usually, obtained data is formatted to the ground station format. In the end-to-end -end test, the formatted data is transferred to the ground station and the station handles the obtained satellite data. This slide summarizes the concept of the single function and the system and the subsystem definition. This slide shows the concept of the single function. This route genes achieve a single function by handling the input parameters and outputting the results of the function. For example, it achieves mathematical subroutine. Sometimes it realizes a logical subroutine that defines the satellite's behavior from status measurement such as the safety alert. The input and output data are recommended to be general, not too device dependent, for obtaining the reusability of the routine. If it is defined by the general parameters, the replacement of a similar function can be achieved easily. The subsystem consists of sum of single function and achieve more complex function by the defined group. The system also defines the input parameters output parameters and the flow of the single function. To achieve the requirement, some periodic sequence is generally defined consisting of single function. For example, to check all the components health, it is required to obtain all component status data by defined order and frequency. In such a case, the component drivers gather their component data periodically and check the contents. In this case, the data acquisition timing control is deeply related to the system performance. The system is constructed by a set of subsystems. It becomes much more complex. It includes enabling or disabling subsystems or functions, and it also has a timing control function. Generally, the trigger for enabling or disabling is set as the detection of the event or ground command. The kind of subsystems or functions set for the operation are defined as the operation mode. The detail of the mode is explained in the next slide. Operational mode definition is very important to achieve the mission requirement. To achieve the requirement, some set of functions have to be performed in order. The group of the function sets is defined as the operational mode. Usually, the requirement is difficult to achieve with only one mode, and the sequence of the mode to achieve the mission is also defined. In this case, the transition trigger between the defined mode and the detailed function during the transition is important. These are mode definition examples. When you design the mode, the most important part are mission operation success and safety assurance. For safety, typically the CubeSat power generation tend to be low and it is important to know each mode per consumption. We have to define the mode which assures battery charging. 
mission operations or communication which are necessary to achieve the project requirement demand relatively large power consumption or attitude control. It is also necessary to define the system health check sequence and safety operations have to be related to the system health. The mode transition is also important. It is very difficult and important for the transition function division between the satellite and the ground station. Generally, the critical decisions for system safety are implemented in the satellite with the definition of an autonomous operation because responsiveness affects the system survivability. These functions have difficulties in verification. Therefore, the number of autonomous functions is recommended to be kept to the minimum. The more transition to the higher layer with large power consumption tend to be achieved by the ground station command. In this way, the requirement is achieved with the realization of the defined mode by software. The design software is implemented as the flight software. The software has to be verified that it can achieve the system requirement. The verification step is also the same as the hardware-related system integration. The verification is performed step by step, starting with the check of a single function. The verification performs the comparison of the designed specification and designed function or performance. Usually, hardware-related software verification are performed together with the hardware integration. This figure shows the verification step. The hardware-related single unit tests are started with the debug line to the personal computer with the debugging software. After that, the subsystem tests are conducted. For example, interface compatibility of the component or data interface are checked. The function selection logic function itself, performance and uh, timing and so on are confirmed with the test scenario. The system test also checks the function selection logic function itself, performance and timing. Some verifications are performed together with the rated component behavior or status measurement. It is necessary to perform the end-to-end -end test. All commands are sent via ground station software and all status are verified to be seen from the ground station monitoring system. During the performance or function-related pack confirmation, it is better to check the related parameter can be modified via ground command. In addition, as summarized in this figure, it is impossible to debug every bug in the software, but we can see the implementation or verification sequence validity by checking the accumulated number of the software bug. Test case has to be defined for debugging and it is recommended to be related to the actual operation. In this way, the implemented flight software verifies its functions or performance. 
In this section, I show system integration, some software function definition, and development example related to the HODL 3 and 4 and the Uniform 1 satellite. In addition, show some options for software development. This slide summarizes the integration of the transmitter. Here it starts with the single component test. Check the status and the command interface with the personal computer. Measure voltage and current characteristic with the standard test equipment for defined input voltage range. The functional and the performance tests are performed by measuring important parameters such as the turning on or off, transmitted power, frequency, waveform, and stability, data interface, and so on. The mechanical interface is measured to pass the design specification. The performance function and the characteristic variation under the possible environment are also confirmed to achieve the mission requirement and component specification. After the configuration of the single component, we move on to the interface verification step between the satellite onboard components. Here, we check the serial data interface by sending command and checking the status data via the onboard software and computer. The transmitted telemetry data interface is also confirmed by checking the transmitted web characteristic. The power-related parameters are also confirmed with the onboard power related components and the voltage and current interface are confirmed. The mechanical interface are also confirmed by fitting to the structure. During the verification, the test data is compared to the former single component test data or the design specification. This part shows the ground station interface. In the satellite, the gathered data is framed or packetized. Error correction coding is performed and moderated and transmitted as a radio wave. In the ground station, the received radio wave is demodulated error correction decoding is performed and then it is depacketalized or deframed. To perform the step-by-step -step confirmation, the test tasks are divided into the data layer and larger work layer. The data format is verified by using the onboard software function and the ground station function by connecting these functions directly. Then the error coding or decoding part are also verified by connecting the related onboard coding or grand decoding function directly by using pseudo random input data. The RF data part are also verified by connecting the onboard moderate and the ground station demonstrator directory using pseudo random input data. After checking all functional variety, 
the whole flow is tested. Taking these kind of steps, the system error points can be distinguished smoothly. The case study of the software design and implementation is summarized in this slide. This part shows the example of the software function division. The lower part are hardware-related part, and they are connected to the other part by defined generalized data interface. In this way, the reusability becomes higher with the suitable software architecture design. This part explains an auto code generator for command and telemetry software, which is developed by one group of our project members. The contents of the telemetry and the command are updated continuously during the system development, and its Version management is difficult. Generally, the contents are managed by the database, and it takes a lot of effort to check the consistencies between the database, on board flight software, and ground station software. The Output code generator generates the flight software and the ground station software database related part by using the database with the defined form. These two save our effort to check the consistency of the developed software. This slide shows an example of the operational mode definition. The mode and the mode transition are defined based on the system requirement. In this project case, it was designed to achieve the mission requirement and assures the survivability. For survivability assurance, the operational modes are sought out based on the power budget analysis. In this system, more complex operations require higher power consumption, the lower part requires higher power consumption. When the system starts up, it is on safe mode, the mode achieves minimum level operation with limited component and generally it can charge a battery without control. When the battery voltage becomes higher than the threshold, the main computer wakes up and the system starts nominal operations, which can handle the command from the ground station. From this mode, we can move on to the component check mode, which can check the status of the components with the ground session command, or attitude log mode, which can check the attitude sensor status with the ground session command, or Spin star acquisition mode. The mode transition are activated with the command from the ground station. The spin star acquisition mode achieves the basic bus operation or fundamental communication with the ground station by achieving low accuracy sound pointing during slow spinning with the low power consumption attitude control sensor and actuators. Because the steam in mode cannot achieve precise and rapid target tracking, the system prepares a three-axis stabilization mode with a higher power consumption actuator. For more precise attitude control, it 
also prepare more precise attitude determination component and uh, logic to achieve the mission requirement. The high accuracy attitude determination components power consumption are higher than the other ones. In the next step of spinning mode, the system can move on to rough sun acquisition mode by the grand command. Then, in the next mode, the pointing target is sent, changed to the center of the Earth, and it achieves a rough slip axis Earth pointing. Here, the mission data downlink is permitted only with the Earth pointing mode because of the transmit antenna pattern constraint. After achieving rough earth pointing, it moves on to precise earth pointing mode for achieving the mission requirement. The operation mode also achieves the requirement step by step. In addition, the mode transition policy is defined to achieve system safety. To assure the system survivability, the autonomous mode transition sequence is set to change the operational mode to the lower power consumption mode. If the system detects the battery voltage become lower than the threshold. Level 3 moves to the spin sun acquisition mode. Level 2 moves to the standby mode. Both mode transitions are coded on the flight software and the session value and the mode transition destination can be updated via ground command. When the battery voltage reaches the lowest threshold, the system moves on to the safe mode by analog circuit logic. These logic feasibilities are confirmed with the new mega simulation together with the experimental verification. This slide summarizes the Atio Control Software verification example. For the Atio Control Software implementation, the feasibility and the validity of the method itself must be confirmed. And then the fabricated software quality has to be confirmed. Finally, the timing or other hardware related part has also to be confirmed with the implementation of the actual hardware. To achieve the verification task, we develop a software verification platform like this. It consists of common new maker simulators part and the verification target part. The common part consists of the new maker simulator with the satellite behavior, such as the environmental emulator and the satellite dynamics calculator. And hardware emulator part consisting of the actuator mathematical model and the sensor's mathematical model. The main verification tasks are confirmed by utilizing the new mega simulator. The input and output interface are adjusted to emulate the actual constraint. The Input parameters are connected to the input of the actuator model and the output parameters are connected to the output of the sensor model. In the logic confirmation part, it calls the model in the loop, melts, tests, control logic, mode transition and so on with the new mega simulator. This phase is closed only within the personal computer. The performance was 
also confirmed by using the new mechanometer with emulate various environmental condition. In this way, the logic of the application part model is verified. Because it is all implemented in the mathematical model, we can check many possible conditions and modify them with the test result. The next step is called sales software in the loop. We use the same numerical simulator, but the interface of the verification target are changed. In this phase, onboard software is developed based on the verified control logic. It tested developed software with the new maker simulator. During this phase, the application part of the actual control code is confirmed by comparing the result with the design policy and the base result. This phase is also performed within the personal computer. The final part, health hardware in the loop, because the attitude control logic has concrete timing control for achieving the mission, this kind of hardware-related part have to be confirmed. The software is controlled under the design constraints and checks the onboard computer performance. In this part, the flight software is implemented on the actual onboard computer. The data interface are modified to connect to the computer easily. And the software achieves the requirement. In this way, the implemented software is tested with new maker simulators and actual hardware. Here, we can check actual code with actual hardware performance and the feasibility of component or hardware driver comparing sales result or system design result. Sometimes other components are also applied to the verification process if needed. In this way, the software's health is verified. After checking the main characteristics feasibilities, we move on to the operational training phase. Here we make the operational procedure for defined phases, initial, nominal mission, emergency, and so on, and perform the operational training based on the procedure. This table shows one of the procedural examples. In addition, the operation procedure Flight software and the ground station software also have to be verified. The operation procedure consists of the command and the ch checkpoint. These kind of repeated confirmation enable us to make the designed procedure smooth and reduce operational error. The procedure itself can be modified to increase the system safety. In addition to the sequential training, these command and telemetry interfaces are also confirmed. And it is also important to finish the software implementation. Until this slide, I showed some examples of software design and development. They are a relatively large implementation load and the Verification also has a lot of tasks. The new player tends to have difficulties in the software design process. And the verification platform construction needs large development effort. 
software testing requires test case definition and it is very difficult for new players. And debug process requires enormous time allocations. In addition, fundamental functions are required in many satellites. Therefore, to shorten the development duration and update the software confirmation level continuously, it is better to survey the open source software of the related project. It enables a reduction of the verification time. From UNICEF, there are some open source software projects. I will introduce one example. It is called an open source virtual satellite. The software's origin is the Hodosh Uniform project. It explains spacecraft onboard software architecture, space environmental simulator, and ground station software. The developer prepared the on-demand lecture site and people can easily access the lecture. The user easily access the contents and does not require to regenerate the existing common function or new maker simulator and it helps the new developer. The advantage to the software developer is gathering cooperation from an engineer for software debugging. These trials realize the mission assurance and shorten the development duration. Now then, I shall conclude my talk. This slide concludes my talk. In this lecture, we introduce the details of system integration and electrical testing. System integration and verification have to be performed in a bottom-up manner with step-by-step -step confirmation compared with the requirement and design, which make the source of error clear. The test result has to be summarized in the report, and the differences in the result of each phase have to be confirmed. The test results have to be confirmed by referring to the system requirement and design. Both software and hardware have to be verified during the integration procedure. Onboard flight software has to be confirmed together with grant software and operation procedure. Utilizing open source software is one option to endure reliability. That's all my presentation. Thank you for your kind attention.